Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Venice Marco Polo Airport. Today I'm flying with low-cost airline Volatea on a very rare aircraft. They're the only European scheduled airline to operate the Boeing 717 and I'm taking one of them to Athens. Let's go. On the surface, Venice might look like any other European airport, but there's something really cool about this airport you should know about. I think this is one of the only airports in the world where you can transit to the airport from the city by water. You can either use the public Vaporetto water bus or you can book your own private transfer in your own boat. I've seen that this can cost at least 150 euros return, so it's something definitely for those with deeper pockets. In any case, the water bus will take around half an hour to get to the city. Along with several other airlines, Voltaire use self-check-in kiosks, but if you have a bag, like I do, then you have to check in with an agent at the desk. Make sure your hand luggage does fit the gauge as shown here, because I did see the staff making checks prior to boarding. Okay, so just airside here at Venice Airport. Lovely day as you can see, nice morning it's turning out to be. Hopefully a very pleasant flight over to Athens is in store for me this morning. Now, somebody asked me on Instagram, how do I deal with haters? Which is a great question and one I get really often from younger viewers and subscribers. The answer is you need to ignore haters. The reason that haters are haters or the bullies are bullies is because they feel insecure and inadequate and they need to drag people down to their level. They can't build themselves up, they don't feel empowered to do that, so they try and drag other people down so they feel equal. And that is why you should ignore haters. Why would you want to pay attention to somebody who has those kind of insecurities? Today I'm using my Priority Pass membership card to get into the Marco Polo Lounge, which is up on the mezzanine level past the food court. Now I've been in this lounge several times before and I have to warn you if you come during the summer peak, especially when the long haul flights to the United States are about to depart, this place gets really busy. However, I was traveling in early spring and not at a time of day that was particularly busy, which is why it looks pretty empty here. The lounge has a whole load of different spaces enclosed within it and my favorite, an outside terrace, which has views of the apron and runway. This particular lounge has a reasonable selection of food and drinks. Bear in mind that if you want to have some wine, you can't just pour it yourself. You have to ask somebody to do it for you. There's a range of hot and cold food available in the lounge, but I have to say the hot food didn't really float my boat, but the cold stuff is pretty difficult for anyone to get wrong and was perfectly adequate. Overall, not too bad a lounge considering you can get in via Priority Pass. The best feature of the lounge I think many people would consider would be this barista operated coffee machine. The lounge also comes with something else that I find really important, an apron and runway view from an enclosed space inside the lounge with big windows. It's the perfect spot for me to have something to eat and drink and catch up on some work. Today's flight to Athens departs at 10 a.m. and boarding is via bus as Voltaire park all of their 717s out on the far side of the airfield on remote stands. There are now only four operators of the Boeing 717 on scheduled flights anywhere in the world. Delta Airlines has 91, Hawaiian and Qantas Link both have 20, and Voltaire bringing up the rear with 17 examples of their own. Voltaire are phasing the 717 out of service and it will be replaced by second-hand Airbus A319 aircraft. My first impressions of the cabin are that it was bright and spacious. The seating layout is standard for 717s, two on the left hand side and three on the right hand side with a central aisle running down the middle. I appreciated the airline's efforts to make an otherwise boring grey cabin a bit more interesting with some coloured headrests. It really does make all the difference. I was sitting in seat 1A and this seat comes with two whole windows more than any other seat on the aircraft. The front row seats have a decent amount of legroom, but bear in mind that most of this saving is around the knees, as there's not a seat in front of you. As far as toe space goes, it can be a little tight. This is how to fasten, adjust and to unfasten your seatbelt. Question 1. 
Sabahın sen de onun sen de. The engines of the 717 are at the rear of the aircraft and this means that the front seats are incredibly quiet. Takeoff is silent and smooth and soon we're heading down the Adriatic coast towards Greece and Athens. Let's take a quick look at today's route. Venice to Athens is 793 miles. It'll take us about 1 hour and 45 minutes to travel the whole distance at around 32,000 feet. Voltaire's 717s are somewhere between 15 and 20 years old, and they're starting to show their age. The tray table deployed fine, but unfortunately for some reason, this particular metal knob on the end didn't stow properly, and I had to make sure the table didn't wobble by jamming it into the armrest. There were also a number of other signs of wear on this aircraft. The tray table itself was pretty worn and tattered, and as for the ceiling here, I'm not quite sure what this is, but it looks dirty, and it looks like it shouldn't be visible to the passenger like this. Finally, the bulkhead was definitely showing its own signs of age. The rest of the passenger cabin seemed to be in very good working order though, and when I visited the toilet I was impressed by just how clean it was. Look at those retro light fittings by the way, I'm not sure I've seen lights like that on any other aircraft toilet. One thing you'll definitely want to be aware of if you're booking the front row seats. The toilet is at the back of the aircraft, and it's a fairly long walk back, especially if you find yourself pinned in by the trolley. The views on board as we pass down the coast of the Adriatic Sea are stunning, and about 20 minutes after takeoff, the cabin service starts. If you've pre booked an in flight snack like me, then this is printed on your boarding card. You'll need to show the boarding card to the cabin crew to redeem it. I pre booked a snack of noodles and a cup of coffee. Both of these were absolutely fine, I guess. The main reason that I do these kind of bookings, including the in-flight goodies, is so I can show you guys exactly what you'll get if you pay a little more money, and decide for yourself whether it's worth it. You can actually book the Venice to Athens route for less than 30 euros one way. In case you're wondering what the Mega Volatea price is, this is basically a frequent flyers member club that you can become a member of for 49.99 a year. It seems like reasonable value if you fly them a lot. Now, when you book a flight with Volatea, they'll offer to upsell you two combinations. The first one is just called Combo and comes with flexibility and general seating pick, and this Combo Plus, which is what I got, mainly because I had a bag to check. You'll notice the price of a bag on its own is exactly the same as that of the whole combination. Flying over the incredible scenery of Bosnia, Montenegro and Albania has made me really inspired to visit these countries in the future. However, before too long, the aircraft starts descending and we're heading in towards Athens, one of the great metropolises of Europe. The views on the way in not only include those of the entire city of Athens, but also we get a glimpse of the former international airport of Athens, Elenikon. So to sum up, my flight cost me £52 one way, that's around about €60. Euros. I personally think that's fantastic value for any airfare which includes seat selection and a whole bag. To be honest, on most of my trips I don't usually take a whole bag and I'd be more than happy just to pay the base fare and €8 Euros for seat selection and get the flight for about half the price in future. The coffee and snack were pretty nice to have and are basically there as a thank you for buying one of the more expensive fare bands that includes that hold bag. However, I think on a flight of less than two hours, I could definitely live without this. Volatea are a pretty serviceable budget airline in my view, and given that they are quite so cheap, I'm prepared to overlook the fact that the cabin was definitely not as clean or as tidy as it should have been. I'm not sure I like them enough to be going out of my way to take them in the future, but certainly if they were the cheapest option on a route that I needed to take, I'd have no hesitation in booking the Volatea again. I'll wrap things up here, safe flying, and I'll see you again in a few days with another video.